Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Genmon on Portainer. So, a little bit about this too is I'm going over home lab, installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse, so go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So, Let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what I'll be installing today. Genmon, Generac, and other models. A generator monitoring using R Raspberry Pi and Wi-Fi. Uh, you can also use uh, the open gen set, and that means that it's bridging and it's not storing all the data directly on the side of your generator with Raspberry Pi. You can actually uh, send all the data to a virtual machine. Um, today, we'll, we'll be installing it on Portainer, so you can send the da data through there um, uh, to the Docker. Um, so now this is what the functionality is. So monitoring a generator, a displaying serial numbers, there's all kinds of functionality in this. Um, so you can get SMS notifications and notifications on email, and you can also use call me bot, uh, the command line application, all functionality of email, ability to, uh, to set exercise time and generator time, ability to start, stop, exercise and start an active transfer switch. Um, so now you can see the UI right here. So this is what the UI looks like. And also status, maintenance, outage, logs, monitor, not notifications and settings. So that's what we'll be installing today. So I was fixing to create my own Docker file. Um, so, uh, but I also found that Skipfire um, from pintsize.me already had a Genmon add-on uh, set for it. So he's already got the Docker file set up and the Docker imposed and the, the readme here. So, um, but I wanted to improve this. So I built a new Docker uh, fi fi file off of this one. Um, so still credits to uh, Skipfire for creating the initial one. So I'm gonna go over to my Big Bear Gen Mon and um, to, to my uh, Big Bear Docker images uh, a repo and show you what I built. So now I'm gonna start on Big Bear Docker images and I'm gonna go in the Gen Mon and then uh, I'm going to go in the Docker file. So I'm going to use the slim uh, image of Python. And then uh, I'm going to set the uh, the environment variables for Debian front end and then the time zone. And then I'm going to uh, install the essential packages like Git, sudo, Chrome, and net tools. And then I'm going to clean up. I'm going to expose the ports of 443 and 8000. Uh, so that's going to be exposed on the container. And then the work directory, I'm going to set to git. And then I'm going to configure the use serial TCP to true on the environment variable. And then I'm going to clone the repository and I'm going to go a depth of one. It's a shallow clone. And then I'm going to remove the git genmon.git so it cleans up the image and it shrinks it a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to initialize the application. So this is initialized at the genmon. And then I'm going to clean up the app to ca caches again. Um, so I'm going to copy the entry point uh, script to the container. And that's located over here. And then I'm going to make it executable. And then I'm going to set the entry point. So now um, th there's a readme version and then a Docker compose and then a entry point. So bin bash, I'm going to touch the var log startup dot log and make sure it's there. And then I'm going to change uh, the environment variable. So I'm going to cha change etc genmon genmon dot config. Um, so uh, the use serial TCP and then I'm going to put the environment variable in there. So now I'm going to start the application. So it starts it and uh, this does need root to start. So that's why I didn't change this to another user. Um, so uh, it's going to follow the logs and it's going to tell the log of var log startup dot log. So, so you see it on the output. So 
that's a little bit about the Docker image. So now I'm going to go over the Docker and pose. So um, I'm going to start in Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to go over the search and type Genmon. Then I'm going to go to how to install Genmon on Portainer right here. I'm going to click it. Then I'm going to go in the Docker and pose. So version 3.8 of Docker and pose file formats being used. I'm going to set some services. And then the first service underneath the services is called Big Bear Genmon. The image is coming off of Docker by default because there's no year before this. And this is the Docker image. This is the Docker image tag. This is zero, uh, zero 03. And then the environment variables. So the, the time zone right here, you can set this to your own time zone. And the imports right here are um, 20022. And that's on the host side. If this does collide with another port on your host, you can change it. And then on the container is 22. And then uh, the next port on the host is 38443. And this is on the host. This is on the container. And then the host is 8,000. And then on the container is 8,000. Um, so do not change the container ports. And now restart unless stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, I will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, do not try to restart. And then mounts. So Big Bear Genmon data is on the host side, and that's a local volume that's defined down at the bottom. And then on the container is get a Genmon. And then um, the uh, the host right here is Big Bear Genmon config. And then on the container is etc Genmon. And then now another one is Big Bear Genmon logs, and that's on the host. And then on the container is var log. That's on the container. So do not change the container's port. So uh, the con container's ports or the volumes over here either um, are the paths. So now I'm going to define the volumes down here. So Big Bear Genmon data, that's a local volume that's defined right here for, for this one. And then Big Bear Genmon config is defined down here. And it's for this one as well. And sa same with this one, Big Bear Genmon Logs, and it's for that one. So I'm going to go over here to Copy Raw File. I'm going to click it. Then I'm going to go over to my portainer and get this installed. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down in the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So. Let's get back to registered programming. So now I'm going to start on my portainer and I'm going to go to local right here and then stacks and then add stack up here. And then I'm going to put the stack name as Genmon uh, stack. And then now stacks are just using Docker and pose underneath. So I'm going to go to the web editor right here. I'm going to paste in the Docker and pose that I explained over in Big Bear Video Assets. Once I do that, I'm going to scroll down to deploy that uh, the stack right here. And I'm going to click it. So um, now you want, you, you'll get the 8,000 error right there that says the 8,000 port is taken and it's taken by a portainer. So I'm going to change this to 8,001. And then I'm going to click the deploy stack again. And then there we go. It's successfully deployed. So we got the Genmon stack up and running. So now I'm going to go over the Portainer's UI. So if you start in Stacks and you go in the Stack, Genmon Stack right here, um, you'll see up here Stack and then Editor. And you can go in Editor and you can edit the Docker and Pose. And this is great for uh, creating Docker and Poses and cha changing the versions when you need to. Um, so uh, you can come down here and update the Stack. And uh, you'll, you'll have an option right here to repull image and re redeploy, and you can check mark that or uncheck it. And this means it's going to repull the image off the registry and get it re redeployed. So if the uh, developer updates the current tag, then you can just uh, do that and uh, get it off the registry. And then you press the update button. Um, so if you go back to stack right here, you'll have actions. So you can stop the stack, delete the stack, create template from the stack. Stack duplication slash migration right here. You can see the containers in the stack. And then access control. Now you can go inside the container right here. 
And you can have actions up here. So start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, re uh, re remove, recreate, duplicate, slash edit. The container status are right here. So ID, the name, the status of the runtime. So it's been running for seven minutes. And the created and start time. And you can see logs uh, down here. This is great for debugging. And then inspect, stats, console, and then attach, access, control, and then create image. And then the container details, like the image, the port configuration, the left side is the host, the right side is the container. And then the command entry point, and then the environment variables, the labels right here, and then restart policy. And then uh, volumes, so Genmon stack, Big Bear Genmon data, that's the local volume that we defined. And then you can see the host and the path in the container. And then you can see the connected networks. Uh, so uh, if you want to update the restart policy, I would go back to the stack and go in the editor and then go, go here and update it. Um, so... Uh, that's a little about the Portainer's UI. So now I'm going to go to the UI and show you around. So the Portainer's IP address and then 8001 for the host port that we set. So I'm going to go to it. So now you have tabs over here. Status, maintenance, outage, logs, monitor, notifications, service journal, settings, and add-ons, and about. Um, you can go over to uh, status and you're already on it so battery voltage utility voltage output voltage and then the frequency rpms and cpu temp the status of engine line and then the logs and then time you can go to maintenance and you can see the model the the generator serial number and uh the exercise and then you can set the exercise time the generator time and stop generator start generator and start generator and transfer you can go to the outage and status system and outage no. Um, you can go to logs and you can go to specific days, I'm sure. And then the monitor, uh, the generator mo monitor status, c c communication status, the platform status, and uh, the notifications. So you can set your email here. Um, you can turn these no notifications off and on if you want just outage or error or warning or info. The service journal, so you can add to it and re re repair, check, observation, and then maintenance. Then you can set a date and a time and um, the service hours. Um, you can go into and you can clear the journal. You can print the journal. You can go into settings and you can change these. You can change your site name. You can enable serial over TCP, which you'll need for the open gen set. And uh, sync time, metric units. There's a lot of settings. And then you can set up your outbound email settings right here. And um, you can set up your inbound email a commands a pro a processing right here as well, and the display current weather, and that's using openweathermap.org API key right here. You can go into add-ons right here, and you can see the add-ons that are available. Uh, so our, our Raspberry Pi, Linux, Tank Utility, and then uh, MQTT. This is a Gen Genmon GPIO outputs and inputs, and then uh, output to blink a blink led light and then um a notification to csv log twilio which is used for sms and then the voip uh the voip uh ser service down here for sms and then notifications pushover and the mopika for um for tanks so and uh enhanced exercise I add additional exercise cycles with new functionality for the evolution slash nexus controllers. And then you can go in the bout and you can see uh, like the version, upgrade to the latest version, submit re registers, uh, submit logs, backup, and then the log files down here. So that's a little bit about the UI for Genmon.
So I just went over step by step on getting Genmon running on Portainer. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or any community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.